YouTube was good. Welcome to another episode of New York Prison Talks. If you're new to my channel, I ask that you please like and subscribe. I like to send messages to people that might be facing time that's still out here or family members who have loved ones that's struggling on the inside that could probably take some advice from my videos. You know, I've been having a lot of people commenting on my videos, talking about different topics for me to talk about in different categories. You know, I can't really talk about every single thing because it's like, like I said, I minded my business in prison. It's like I wasn't gang banging to just be all up in the gang's business. I only really knew about the Bloods, the Crips, the Three Bulls, and the Kings, and, and the Muslims, basically. I don't really know about all these extra gangs y'all talk about and whatever y'all be saying. You know, all this stuff happened in New York. I can only talk about New York stuff. And those are the biggest gangs that be running all the jails. So basically, that's the only thing I could talk about for the, when it comes to the gangs. But you know... um. Has somebody asked me what happened about when somebody snitches in prison? You know, that's actually a good topic to talk about because it's a lot of people that be telling in jail. It's a lot of people that be telling. And it's not it's not like you got some people. It's different types of people that like to tell. You got some people that like to that like to straight up will tell you that they are going to tell on you. And then you got some people that will just drop a slip. Now, dropping a slip, I really never knew exactly how the form of dropping a slip is. But dropping a slip is, is somebody basically dry snitching. Dropping a slip is, I don't know exactly how it goes, but I'm pretty sure this is how it could go. Is somebody writing a letter or something and, and, and passing it on to a CO or, or giving it to, to you know a correctional officer, like a sergeant or somebody in uniform. And, you know, that that's basically telling on the law. And, you know, it's a lot of dudes that do, that do that in prison. A lot of dudes do that. Some dudes that might be dropping slips might be telling on the next man because he owed him too much money. And he owed him too much money because he wanted to get so high. And now he owed that dude, he owed a drug dealer all that money. He can't pay it off. And he know he got a time limit probably to pay it off. And he know he probably can't pay it off in that time limit. So what he do is he might drop a slip. And he might drop a slip. Telling on the on drug dealer might be saying something like, "Oh, because I've just seen a lot of a lot of dudes that sell drugs get caught up like this, because they get sell. Because this is how it happens. Dudes might be telling on them, and the next thing you know, the dudes that sell drugs they get a random cell search, a random search, and then or or or, or they just pull them out and just and, and do a strip search on them. And a lot of dudes be getting caught like that. A lot of dudes get caught. A lot of dudes be getting drugs into the jail." And they don't be coming back from the visiting floor because they might be in the, in the shit room for three or four days, trying to get the trying trying to get shit. I'm um, trying to shit because the police wants them to take. Uh, being in the shit, this is what the shit room is. Being in the shit room is dudes got to take a shit, got to give three good full size shits of basically what whatever comes in you, it has to come out of you. From what they giving you to eat, and if you not giving that that them shits, and I don't know, I don't know what happens after that. I, I really never knew about all of that, but all I know is a lot of dudes be going from the visiting floor, and they be, don't be coming back to to their housing unit or coming back to their cell because they got caught up probably because somebody snitched, probably because the the police probably was on them for a hot minute, and now they probably watched them pass drugs on the dance floor or something. Dance floor is the visiting room. Probably watched them past drugs on the dance floor and, and, and they probably watched the whole transaction and now they in the shit room. Now when you being in the shit room, I don't know exactly how it goes, but I know how it goes. Now when you being in the shit room, they gotta get three full shits and basically cause if you swallowing it or or if you swallowing it you could be good cause the shit the shit might not come out of you. But that's why that's why not the shit the, the drugs might not come out of you immediately, but that's why you be in the shit room for like three days. I think probably longer than that too. And um a lot of dudes boot drugs on the dance floor. Boofing is meaning they put it up their ass. So when they get sent to the shit room, they gotta shit it out. That's the only way it comes out of you if you putting it up in you. So that's why the dudes be having to stay in there for three or four days and they gotta get three full shits. And you know, they don't got nothing in the cell. 
They probably get just the toilet and a CO standing in front of their cell the whole time, doing probably watching them and just they 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 just in front of their cell the whole time. And and I seen dudes come back. Cause this is how I know. I seen dudes come back, and they told me what happened. Now I seen dudes. I mean, I some dudes done tell me that that they 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 ended up eating their own shit. They ended up eating their own shit because they they didn't want to get caught. They mother had they must have had like the mother load. The mother load could be like a lot of drugs on them, an ounce or two, two ounces on them, or drugs, illegal drugs, or it don't gotta be. It could be weapons or something. Whatever they boofed up in them, and dudes don't be making it out of that shit. Only a few of them do because a lot of people be getting caught up because they like to talk a lot, or they just probably hot because everybody know they sell drugs, and when you got somebody. That that's hating on you because they seen you getting all that money in jail because you can make a lot of money in prison a lot I'm telling you you can make a whole bunch of lot of money just by selling drugs because a lot of people like to get high in, in jail because that's a lot of like, like that's not like that's the only type of freedom only type of thing way you could get away from being out, out outside like to get outside it's like you trapped in and getting high is the only time you can really get away from all the bullshit that's going on day by day. And it's like, dudes would be hating on them, and they drop a slip. And they might say something like, oh, they might put down a cell number or say their name. You know, police catches on real quick. I remember one time I had a fight. It was my last fight. I actually had a dream about this last night. It was my last fight I had in prison. I had about six months left to go home. And I was working in the mess hall. And I had told a dude, I, I basically was like, I was fake like a boy. I was fake running shit in the mess hall. And it was like, again, I was like one of the big mess hall workers that was running shit. And I ran the tray room. And I remember I told this one dude not to come in my tray room. And he ain't come in my tray because I didn't like him. And he ain't come in my tray room for like a few weeks. He ain't come in my tray room for a few weeks. Me and him ended up getting cool. He thought shit was sweet though. Just because we cool and I might be saying what's good or whatnot. I might be saying that because I don't want you probably telling on me because I know what type of guy you is. I might just keep a mutual respect, you feel me? But you know, some dudes like that might take that to the extreme and get too comfortable. And when I told him don't come in my trade room, I really meant that because I really had position in the trade room. Position in the trade room meaning I'm running the trade room. Only me could be in the trade room. Trade room is where all the trays get cleaned up. It's, it's like the dishwasher room. And I told him don't come in the trade room. So boy entered the trade room. And I told him, then I tell you don't come in my trade room? He thought it was sweet. He was like, oh yeah. And he started taking off his mess hall clothes. I just ended up two piece in the shit out of him. Right then and then he dropped. He took him on, yo, stop, yo, stop, yo, stop. Started beating his ass even more. COs wasn't around because this is the time where all the mess hall workers is getting is eating and they getting ready. They send up the mess hall and all the all the COs they probably on lunch or something. They not in the tray room because child was not going on during the time. And I ended up being his ass. Now I was scared because as soon when I beat his ass, the CO was coming right then and there immediately, just making his round, just checking. He didn't know what was going on. He was just making a round. He was just checking on shit. And he he ended up. Having a big ass black eye, like I'm not, I'm not lying about this. He had a big ass black eye, like if anybody ever seen the movie Friday, y'all know how Debo beat the shit out of that one dude, punched him out, and dude Red, his name was Red, his eye was like that, but ten times worse than Red's eye. Like I'm talking about, like, like it was not, it was mad noticeable. It, it CEOs gotta ask him what happened to your eye. You, you didn't come to work like that. What the fuck just happened? He ended up telling the CEO that he slipped and fall in the, in the tray room. Because, you know, the tray room is, is wet. It's a lot of water on the floor because of the trays and, again, and the, on the machines be leaking and stuff. But the CEOs wasn't jacking that shit. So, at the time and moment, because they was about to run child and stuff. So, at the time and moment, they couldn't really do too much about it but send him back to his cell. Because they didn't know what was going on. Now, when he sent him back to his cell, he was under investigation. Under investigation meaning you can't really leave your cell like that until the CEOs figure out what's going on and the situation's cleared up and stuff. 
And so he was under investigation. Now, when I had beat him up, it was a few dudes around. It was about three or four guys around. But you know, everybody's human. And everybody like to talk in prison. So dudes know that was my trade room. They seen him getting beat up. Now dudes is wondering, the fuck just happened? Dudes is, other dudes is telling them what happened. Yo, L just beat him up. L just did this. L just ah, ah, ah. And now... It's so many rats that work in the mess hall, you don't know who might tell. So for like a whole week, I was kind of scared because I had six months to go home. I could talk about this now. I had six months to go home and I was trying to get home on my CR, my conditional release with my last six months. This is why I tell dudes it's very important. It's very, very important to stay out of trouble your last year, your last six months. Because if you get catch a fight or you catch a, a drug ticket and you got to make up for the program and you got to take a program or retake the program, you might not make that conditional release date. You're going to end up having to max out if you don't got all your programs completed by the time you're supposed to go home on early. And I had all my programs completed. And if I would have got caught... I never got caught, but if I would have got caught with that fight, I would have had to take ART all over again. A ART is basically an anger management program that you had to take if you have a violent crime. And I had a violent crime. If you got a non-violent crime, it's basically people that have non-violent crimes is drug is drug related. They got to take ASAP before they go home. This is to meet the standards for your conditional release date to go home. And I had completed all my programs. But even though I completed it, if I had got into a fight, I would have to retake the program. And I had six months to go home. And I was kind of scared because I was like, yo, I hope none of these dudes tell on me. So a few days go by. The dude's walking around the whole jail. He ended up getting out of an investigation. But the dude's walking around the whole jail with a big-ass black eye. Like a big-ass black eye. You got all the bloods laughing at him. You got all the seals probably laughing at him on the low. Some seals that kind of cared about him was really wondering what happened in his eye. So then you got the certain rats in, the, in, in that worked in the mess hall that kind of gave seals the scoop. But long story short, they couldn't really prove it was me or they couldn't really do too much about it because they didn't catch me do it. You know, they just heard word. The dude that ended up that I ended up beating up, he ends up writing me a letter and explaining I had to tell. I said, I didn't say everything, but I just said that we got into a situation, ah, uh, ah, uh, and boy told he dropped a slip. When he was on investigation, he was in the cell the whole time. He probably was going crazy and shit. Oh, I'm on the investigation. You being on, most you really be on investigation, they call it 72. You just be in keep lock. 72 hours, three days, you be in keep lock. That's as long as you be in your cell, there ain't nothing. You, you still got all your property. Still go watch TV in your cell. You got all your commissary food. You getting, you getting the trays is coming to your cell. All the food trays is coming to your cell. You, you chilling. You just in the cell all day long. You can't leave for three days. And he ended up telling on me. Now, what happened to me is I got under investigation because dudes, several people had dropped slips on me, or several people had sergeant interviews. Now, a sergeant interview is is basically when a sergeant call you down and he asks you questions about the situation or what's going on. Or such and such dates, this, that, and the third happened. Was you around? Do you know anything about this situation? Now, anybody could get a sergeant interview if they was around a situation that had a fight or something. You going down and getting a sergeant interview don't mean you telling, don't mean nothing. Because it just means you was in the area and you was around and you probably know some information that you probably could get to the COs. And a lot of dudes like to tell like that for the sergeant interviews. They might go in a room and they dry snitch on the low. Nobody ain't know when they tell it. Nobody ain't really know. But dudes know who the rat to be. So we know that he went down, he went down, he went down. We know he's a rat. He was the last man that went down for the sergeant interview. Now, nobody else is getting interviewed after him. And since nobody else is getting interviewed after him, you know what that means? He probably told because they probably, they, they stopped interviewing people. They got enough information, enough data, this down the third. So, so they, they got what they wanted. So 
basically when that stuff happens and we know dudes know he was a rat and after him he was the last man to get interviewed and now the case is closed dudes know it was him that told and you know that happened to me so i got sergeant interview and the sergeant was asking me questions oh i heard that you had a fight and you you gave you did that to his eye i'm talking about i don't know nothing that happened i was not even in the trade room when that happened i was eating I was sitting down in the mess. There's no, there's no cameras in the mess hall. So they couldn't prove nothing. It was basically he said versus he, he said, she said shit. They couldn't prove anything f that I did. So long story short, what ended up happening was they just fired me from the mess hall. Now, I was cool with that. I was, I was kind of happy with that. Why? Because I know that I ain't had to be around all those rats because a lot of rats work in the mess hall, the mess hall workers. A lot of people like to work in the mess hall, though, because that's probably the most state money you could get from what they give you from working. That's that's the most money you can make in that jail out of all the all the jobs and all the programs you could get. The mess hall was one of the highest paying jobs. That's why I chose that, because, you know, sometimes it could get real and you could get messed up and might not have that, that money order or or you might be running out of commissary. And, you know, working in the mess hall, you got some perks. You you, you can make your own um, make your own mess hall food and, and perk it up the way you want to. You can steal out of the mess hall if you want to. You can steal raw rice out of the mess hall, brown sugar, because they don't sell brown sugar in that jail. You can steal black pepper because a lot of black pepper gets stolen out of the mess hall and a lot of dudes like to cook with it. A lot of dudes sell it too Because it's rare You can't buy black pepper Because like dudes like to make shit with black pepper And they can turn it into a weapon And pepper spray you or something with that Dudes is real, real, real smart When it comes to that criminal shit Of trying to get somebody They'll use any type of thing To probably mace you, blind you or something So that's why they don't sell it So if a dude trying to sell black pepper in a mess hall And he got it on deck He gonna make a lot of money off that Instead of selling drugs That's a different type of way of selling, getting money But since I got kicked out of the mess hall, I didn't have to work. I was cool with that. I was looking at it like, these dudes got a lot of years left. I only got six months left. It's all good. It was all good. Nothing had happened. Only thing that happened was, dude was walking around the mess hall for like a good three weeks with a black eye. He was walking around the whole jail. Every time he entered the mess hall, it was everybody in the mess hall. It probably be like about 60 people with and eating in the mess hall Probably 60 to I think 60 to 100 people Eating in the mess hall Depending on the day And if it's a good day Or bad day If it's a bad day It'd be less people Eating in the mess hall They have it more secured And And he was going out to wreck He was going out to the yard With that black guy He was one of them person That just didn't care though Cause he had a lot of time too So he just didn't care And he He had to face that shit and a lot of dudes was just, just, just clowning him. Like, I was hearing that from when I would go in my cell and dudes was coming back. Dudes was coming back to their cell from the mess hall or coming back from the yard. Yo, yo, y'all seen boy face? Yo, y'all see yo, boy walking around with the Debo eye. Who did that shit then? I'm not saying nothing. I'm not telling niggas I did that. Why would I tell dudes I did that? That's like telling on myself. I'm shouting out, yo, yo, I did that, yo, L did that. Them rats be listening in they cells, you feel me? So I don't, I, I knew how to move in prison to where if I did some shit, it wouldn't get out there like that. If I beat somebody up, because I didn't really have that many fights. If I, like, but that last fight, when I had, when I had spanked his ass, I moved all the way different. Wasn't talking about the situation, none of that shit. Because dudes like to talk and run their mouths, and that's how problems got, got happened. Now, the dude I beat up, he wasn't big, gang banging or nothing. He wasn't Muslim. He wasn't none of that shit. He was just somebody that was trying to act tough. And I know he wasn't built like that. So I ended up spanking him. Because that's the main reason why I told him, don't come in, the, don't come in my trade room. Because if he want to come and joke around and play and want to get all loudy, rowdy and loudy and, and act all tough. And, you know, a lot of dudes like to talk crazy to you or try to try to push you and make you feel some type of way right before you go home. Because they know you're going home. So a lot of dudes like to test you. And that, that's a lot of people don't get. A lot of dudes like to get tested. And I kind of fell for that. I kind of fell for that. But I wanted to beat his ass up anyways. Because I just didn't like boy. But a lot of dudes get tested in a way where. They get thrown at suck my dick. Or like they people might just talk crazy to them. 
And now they want to come out they cell with three months left, six months left, and want to cut the dude just because he told him to suck his dick. Now, I know that's very bad in jail, very important for dudes. But, but long story short, if a dude told you to suck your dick in jail, you know you ain't really sucking boy dick. That's one. Two, yo, you ain't got no choice. If you know you got, especially if you got like 30 days left. Just hold that shit down. Because when you get released, all them dudes is still going to be in prison. They still locked up. Like, them, uh, that dude I beat up, that happened in 2018. It's 2021, and he's still locked up to this very day. He doesn't come home, I think, to like 2026. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a lot of people don't understand that shit. When you get released, you really get released. Dudes ain't getting released out of their maxes like that every day. Not really. And there's a lot of dudes that like the like I got on track with the with the drop and the slip. But like I said, when dudes want to drop slips, they're gonna do it on the low. They write it around, they write a little a letter or, or however that shit go and drop a slip. And then next thing you know, you might get a sales search or something might happen to you with the seals. They might be changing your location. You might be in this block and you might go to another block because you might be a threat to some people and they just moving you around. They might just keep fucking with you all the time because they know you probably selling drugs. They know you game banging and they probably don't like you because they little rats be, be telling everything that goes on. That's another thing. It's a lot of, it's a lot of dudes that it's like police pets. Police pets is them rats. And you know who the police pets are because the police pets are the dudes that probably be getting like extra privileges or something. Like seals might come in with food, might give them some food or something. Food from home. Or they might talk to them all the time. Soon when the dude come in, come in from his shift, the seal come in from his shift, they might be just talking to him though. Hey, how's it going, buddy? I ah, have a whole full-blown conversation. Now, when you see dudes that have a full-blown conversation like that, you you, you automatically looking at at, at the inmate, at, at boy, like, he's suspect. He's sus. Like, why are you talking to him like that? Because, like, being an inmate and being in jail and prison and you as an inmate, the COs is kind of like the ops. That's how we look at them because they talk crazy to us. We don't really like them. They don't they don't like us and we don't like them. You feel me? So it's like we look at them as like an ops. So when we see other inmates or other dudes, I'm, I don't like saying that word inmate. Like I'm just trying to describe it to other people out here because I, I used to be one of them. But when you see other dudes talk to them COs like that, it's like. You looking at them like, yo, why are you talking to the boy? And then that whole sign, a lot of dudes see that. Dudes pay attention. Dudes pay attention fast in prison. They catch on quick, criminal minded to the max. And 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 a lot of dudes get shot like that. But a lot of dudes also don't get shot. Cause you got some dudes that will straight up tell dude that straight up tell you to your face, I will tell right on you. I didn't see that happen a few times. It usually be the old ones that might say that. That probably got like 30 years into life. They got like 30 years in already, but they got life and they never going home. So they don't care. They will tell you, I will, I will tell on you and press charges on you if you touch me. That's a fact because they know that, that they could get shot and get a cut and, and that they could catch a lawsuit because they know what they're doing. They, they know what they're doing. And the SEAL is going to make sure that that happens. They're going to follow up the paperwork. Such and such got cut. I just seen this happen. Such and such got cut. And now he got a whole nother case. With a dude that got 30 years in, and he could he caught a lawsuit off that. He pressed charges on you. And now you got a new charge because you wanted to cut a rape or a homo. But that's usually be the rats. The rats be the homos or the rapos or some shit like that. Those mainly be the rats. Mainly be the rapos. Them rapos, because them, them rapos be scared. They don't know what to do. Rapos is rapists. They don't know they don't know what to do. And it's like they 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 try to play position with police more than anything, so they like to tell, and and then when they tell it, the CEOs kind of like that shit because they getting information of what's going on. They getting the whole scoop of what's going on. They get all the information that they don't see. They getting it from from a, on on the inmate side, and they gonna believe everything they say. 
Why? Because that's how they build a relationship with the COs. They might get extra privileges, extra phone calls, or something, something like that. Just some type of extra privilege and do see that shit. And it'd be kind of hard to want to cut them because you know that they're going to be trying to tell on you. They're not scared to tell on you. And the worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to want to try to press charges on you. Now, best way to get 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 one of them, them, them rats is basically you got to catch them on the low where nobody's around and, and gun them down the best way you could. That that's That's the only way to catch a rat. Them, them rats, them, them rats, they don't get beat. I'm not lying about they don't be getting beat up like that because dudes be scared to beat them up because just off of that. But that dropping the slip is a lot of dudes do that on the low because they that's the best way to do it if you tell him. That's how dudes like to tell. They drop a slip. They got they got um orientation. When you go to every jail, you go to orientation. And they tell you, drop us in certain facilities, they might tell you to drop a slip if you need any questions or anything, drop a slip in the mailbox. Now that's giving out people idea when they say drop a slip, meaning for help or something. If you need, if you request mental health or something. That's a lot of dudes like to tell through mental health too. They want to play the bug out role, and then when they go crazy and then they go see mental health, they like to give mental health to school. A lot like it's mad different ways dudes like to tell that I've seen happen. And I seen dudes get caught up about because a lot of dudes I like I used to fuck with a lot of dudes that that sold drugs, a lot of dudes that was game banging, and a lot of dudes that just minded their business. Those are the type of three people I I kind of talk to: the drug dealers, the game bangers, and the dudes that just was probably neutral minding their own business. And it's like. When you, you see those type of people versus the people that don't talk to nobody or the people that like to talk to the SEALs a lot, you automatically label them as they the ops because they part of the SEALs, they with the SEALs, they working with the SEALs. And them dudes that like to tell, that like to tell and give all the information to the SEALs, they don't get nothing out of that shit. They dead ass don't. Like I said, they might get a little they get a little bit of food here and they just like to talk to them all day long. They don't, they not going home. They telling for no reason. They not going home, and I would never understand that. They not going home. They not getting the keys to get out the jail. None of that shit. So I would never understand why dudes like to tell in prison. It just doesn't make sense. Not much happens to them snitches because they dudes just be scared, and that's all I got to say. I thank y'all for coming to my channel. If people that that that's listening to this video tell, just think about that. That might be facing time. That's still out here. Just think about what I said about the rats. And people that got family members that's locked up, that's probably doing bad or probably just getting the situation. Just think about dudes were telling them in a quick minute that's working with the police. Because there's always a rat around that might be working with the police. And that's a fact. Thank you for coming to my channel. Please like and subscribe. Thank you once again.